so my name is Dmitry Dubrovsky. I am working. I used to work as a director of human rights project and human rights program at the Smolny Department of Liberal Arts and Science. And now I'm a Reagan Festival Fellow in National Endowment for Democracy, Washington, D.C. My interest is uh, uh, cultural uh, relativism in human rights and the challenge of universal values of human rights. It's on the one side. From the other side, I'm, my specialization is the rights of the people who belong to different minorities and the question of hate speech and hate crime. So freedom of speech, limitation, and also the protection of the people who belong to different minorities. The current challenge for the representative of minorities is the politics of the state. And the politics of the state tends to be more universal on the one side, for the other side more local, more particular. And this is the uh, kind of struggle between universalism of the uh, politics uh, all the politics, well, let's say, uh, creation of the European identity. And for the other side, uh, the local representation and how local the people could be, uh, how they could preserve their particular interest and particular uh, uh, traditions sometimes in contradiction with the universal character of the politics of the state. So that's, that seems to me important, uh, disregard of what kind of minority we are considering. It might be a well, sexual minority, it might be a religious minority, it might be a, a women, and it might, might be an ethnic and racial minority. So this is, uh, although that might be interesting to find a difference, well, because they sometimes have different issues. But at the same time, it is important to understand this is the most universal challenge they have, they have, and it's the universal uh, universal challenge that should be uh, a universal issue that should be resolved. I'm working very much with the LGBT community for the last several years, but it was coincident. It happened coincidentally. I've never concentrating and never spent a lot of time for the gender studies but because I've, I've worked for the up to 10 years as a testimonial expert in the cases devoted to mm, hate crime and hate speech I was invited to uh, to provide my expertise to the cases on the hate crime when the LGBT were the objects of the uh, well victims of the hate crime attack Hate-motivated attack. So, and it was interesting challenge to to collect information and to write expertise why LGBT is vulnerable groups in Russia, and why LGBT is certainly the uh, object for the hate crime attack. Because it was it was this this is this the real story is the real problems with the Russian investigation committee. Is the Russian investigation committee, law, uh, Russian law enforcement bodies usually do not consider LGBT as a vulnerable groups. They do not consider LGBT as a social group under attack. And that's why they do not agree usually to open the case against the perpetrators on the motivation of the hate crime. So they, they could be, the, the, the perpetrators, they could be punished as, um, uh, as a, uh, just for hooliganism, for example. But they usually do not consider the LGBT as a uh, as a group which could be the attack because of the, their sexual orientation. Well, uh, because I'm academics mostly, I'm working in between civil society and academia. I believe it's the one of the possible way to legitimize the LGBT in the public sphere. So that should be done well. To speak, to protect the people at the trial is not enough. I believe that it should be, should be uh, uh, we should want the struggle for the public sphere, for the, for the publicity. That's why I'm participating in the uh, 
funny organization. I believe it's, it was a very genius invention. Um, uh, we have created the group called um, Alliance for uh, uh, Alliance of Straight for the Bibliotheque Quality. And that was idea to, for, for on the one side, to broke the they broke the common understanding when the the protection of minorities is usually the uh, activity of the minorities itself. So that's that was the to create the organization where the principle of solidarity will be on the top of the uh, common ideology, how we could provide the the protection, and secondly to to fight against the homophobic people, but not not well physically, rather symbolically, to represent, to publicize their, uh, and to deconstruct. So what we really need in academia to deconstruct the argument, to, uh, well, not to fight with the homophobic people using the law, which is sometimes very, from my understanding, is really a stupid idea, but rather to deconstruct the public, uh, to we need the public response. We need to uh, deconstruct the argument. We really need to answer them on the basis of the current ethic and also the current uh, social and humanities uh, uh, science. Well, from the government, uh, not directly, but uh, because I just lost my position as a lecturer at the university a in, in couple of months ago, mostly because of my civil rights activity and in particular because of my active participation in the protection of LGBT rights. And the, the pro one of the problems for now, uh, the, the civil rights activists as well as uh, polit political opponents of the current regime, they are losing their position mostly because of the manipulation with the administrative law. So it's mo practically no one lose, lost the position because of the well, official uh, acquisition and the political activity. No. This is uh, very common right now for, to use the administrative law is the very useful tool to punish the uh, rules who are dare to uh, resist against the any kind of limitation of freedom of speech, any kind of limitation of civil rights. Well, I believe it's because, uh, mostly because they are nervous. Because uh, I, although the, the protest of the 2012 uh, was failed, but at the same time the, uh, the real Mm, understanding real feelings of the current political regime right now yeah. create uh, started to be more nervous more they have just our orange paranoia and that's why they are uh, I believe they are more or less understood they are not very much legitimized le legitimized right now and because they are not very much legitimized I believe they are really uh, would like to uh, to decrease the influence of those who are speaking from the other perspective, who are providing the alternative points of view. So just as well to stop the independent voices in the in the society, and keeping in mind that, that for the Russia as well for the other post-European countries is very important uh, to, to position. Very important the position of the uh, academics because they're very high symbolical capital of the academics in the society. So I believe that uh, that's why the uh, one of the rights and freedoms under threat right now in the Russia is academic rights and freedoms. Oh, well. But right now the future is not very negative, not very optimistic, I would say. But uh, uh, what I really hope we can we can uh, have the number of activists safe, physically and morally. And when we will have the next window of opportunity, we will be able to use it more efficiently in compared with with how it use it.
before. Of course, well, there, there, there are no changes could, could happen quickly, but I believe that in reality, in reality we, can, we can achieve this goal through the, uh, not only education, but also for the very uh, trustful and long discussions and dialogue with all the opponents who are ready to speak with us, by the way. Of course, not, not, all, the, not, not, not all the opponents are ready to speak. Some of opponents must be ready to fight.